Okay, we move into a new area now and, and a topic known as probability distributions. It's quite a, a big and, and an important um, topic and it's the last one we're going to do uh, for this term. Um, and uh, so that will will round out the year for us um, before we go into our yearly exam. So it's, it's going to take us a couple of weeks to get through it. Um, really interesting section, but, um, but as I say, it's all, it'll all be sort of new for you. and. Uh, but really interesting uh, and and statistically quite quite a, quite an important area one that might help you with your with your um independent sorry your uh, your IAs your explorations okay so I've got some notes down here for you to to start with so you might just pause the screen and get these down um, and you could do that now I will uh, once you've written them down perhaps I'm going to go through. Uh, and, and talk it through a little bit and maybe give some explanations and and um, so you might like to just pause and write this out and then play again and and uh, and listen to my explanations which which hopefully will will help so discrete random variables is the heading um, and and really firstly we need to define what a random variable is now you know what these words mean random um, unpredictable uh, you know something that's unpredictable so if we're rolling a die it's that's a random event Flipping a coin, random event. It's a, um, uh, it's it's tied in with probability. A variable, uh, well, a variable is just a, um, is a, is, a, is a quantity that can vary. So, uh, the number of uh, when you flip a coin three times, the number of heads. That's that's a, that's a that's the, the number of heads that come down. That's going to be variable. So you flip the coin three times, you might get zero, you might get one, two, three. That's that's an example of a, um, a random variable. So. That's good. Uh, usually written as X, so it's capital X, and, and this will make more sense once you've looked at perhaps an example or two. Uh, as a variable whose possible values are, nu are numerical outcomes of a random experiment. So, like I just said, rolling a die, flipping a coin, um, infinite number of situations we can talk about there. There are two types of random variables, discrete and continuous. It's important you know the difference between them. We're going to look at a discrete random variable example, and that's going to be the binomial distribution where we're going to get Pascal's triangle back into action, which will excite you, I know. And then there's the continuous random variables um, for which we look at the normal distribution, which is the bell curve, uh, looking at more areas under curve. So with, with discrete random variables, discrete means exact sort of value. So um, a, a really good example of, of a, the difference between discrete and continuous is say in, um, let's say the the length of your foot is a continuous, uh, if we just, if we measured, uh, if we've got a hundred people and measured their feet, then that would be, we'd, 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 that would be defined as a continuous set of data because that, you know, you, theoretically you could have a foot size anywhere between, you know, um, I don't know, smallest foot size, five, ten centimeters, all the way up to, you know, huge feet, uh, whatever they are, um, f uh, 40 centimeters, wherever. Um, and it could take any value in between. That's where that's where the continuous comes from. A discrete random variable in the same sort of a context of, of a foot would be a shoe size because a shoe size is, is exact. So you're, you're either going to be four, four and a half, five, five and a half, six. Um, although, uh, you know, it's countable. It's usually looking at um, integer values. So discrete, uh, countable, whole numbers, uh, continuous, not countable, can't be precise. We're looking at more, as it says here, um, looking over an interval of values and, and looking at areas under curves to represent the quantities rather than a countable number of, of values. So um, we're going to first look at discrete random variables and some examples there and then we're going to move into this binomial distribution. But firstly, let's just have a, a look at an example of a discrete random variable. Um, so or a discrete random variable uh, situation. So we'll have a look at an example. I might pause here and write this example out. Okay, the example is written out, um, and this is it. Three coins are tossed uh, simultaneously. They're thrown up in the air, and the number of heads are counted. Um, so let x represent the number of heads. So x is our random variable. Can be can take on any value, um, and it's a discrete random variable because it's going to be a whole number. It's countable. So it's either going to be no heads, one head, two heads, or three heads. Construct a probability distribution table for x. Now you're used to constructing tables, frequency distribution tables and statistics. This is going to be probability distribution table. It'll make lots of sense to you in a moment. Let's just have a look at it. So how do we set this up? So we have, well, firstly, we, we um, lowercase x is going to represent the the different discrete values that, that x can take, that um, capital X can take. So 
Okay, we're tossing a coin three times. So we can have zero heads. Uh, we can have one head. We can have two heads. And we can have three heads. Right, these are all the different uh, possibilities when we toss three coins up. And we're, we're, we've defined the random variable as the number of heads. Okay, um, so what we're going to do now is we're going to look at the probability, and this is going to be our distribution of probabilities, probability that our random variable x will equal the specific value of um, x that we're looking at. So in this in the, in this first first um, first spot, uh, first spot here, uh, zero heads. So what's the probability of zero heads? You know, when you, you toss three coins up in the air. So it's going to be tail tail tail. There's only one outcome of that, isn't there? So that's going to be one over eight, half times a half times a half. Now, what about one one head? So for one head, well, that could be um, again. It's you know, so the the outcomes here. I'm thinking right, it could be head tail tail. It could be tail head tail. It could be uh, tail tail head like that. So there's three three outcomes all worth one eighth so that'd be three eighths and if you look at two heads you know, it's head head tail so it's going to be the same isn't it? head tail head tail head head again three outcomes all worth one eighth so three eighths there and three heads well that's just only one outcome that works there now what we'll we'll notice here is that we get a sum uh, always of our probability distribution table has to sum to 8 over 8 or 1, our probabilities, because we are what we're doing is we are outlaying all the probabilities, all the possibilities that there are, so they have to sum to 1. It's a probability distribution table for x, defined as the number of heads when you throw three coins. Alright, so that's example 1. It's a, it's a discrete random variable distribution table. Um, Alright, let's have a look at another example, um, then we'll close. Okay, a second example, um, two ordinary dice are rolled and the uppermost faces are added together. Uh, let x be the sum of those, the two dice, the two uppermost faces. Okay, so you get the idea. Construct a probability distribution for x. So here we go. Let's, um, let's have a look at, again, what's, what are our possible values for our probability for our random variable x? Okay, so let's set our table up. That's x equals x. So our smallest value, so we're going to go with double 1. So 2 is going to be our smallest sum. Um, and we can obviously get 3, 4 in different ways, can't we? 5, 6, 7. So if we're summing them up, we've, we're going to have to go to 12, aren't we? Because we can get a double 6, which will be our greatest value. There we go, 12. Now we need to work out the probabilities of all, all 11 here. And in order to do so, we're going to have to set up a little sample space of, of all the all the um, all the outcomes, aren't we? So I'll do that. And I'll pause, and we'll come back to it. Okay, it's time to fill in our probability distribution now. Uh, so so how many twos are there? So I've I've done a in red are my sums. You know, across here I've got dice uh, die one, die two here, and so the combination in, in the middle here, the red numbers are the sums. You know, for example, this one here is four and three, so it's seven. You get the idea. So um, Excuse me, so how many twos do we have? Well, out of my 36, I've only got one two, so that's just one in 36. How many threes do I have? It's going to be, I'm going to see a pattern here, aren't I? There's this little, this little diagonal here gives me my threes. There's two of those, so two in 36. I'm going to leave unsimplified just because it'll make my sum easier at the end to make sure I get one. Uh, my fours, I've got three of those, three over 36. I'm guessing I've got five, one, two, three, four over 36. Uh, my 6 is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 over 36. My 7 is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 over 36. My 8 is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. I'm guessing I'm going to go down to 4, 3, 2, and 1. And if I sum these, I should get 36. 1, 3, 6, 10, 15, 21, 26, 30, 33, 35, 36. So my sum, my sum of my um, probability of x equal x's is equal to 1. So that's perfect. That's just how we like it. Okay, um, that's enough talking about probability distributions. Time to get some practice. 
in exercise 15a. So we'll attack that. Um, I'll get you some work requirements once we're once we're in class. So I'll see you then. Cheers.